Hello and welcome. My name is Alan and today we're going to look at what happened on Dynamite. So, Dynamite starts out. John Moxley comes out talking a lot of, you know, I'm the greatest there is. You suck, punk. You know, you only lasted three minutes. Everybody talked about how you were the greatest there is. Blah, blah, blah. Bad mouthing punk. Eh. And of course, he's in Chicago, so he's really playing the bad guy part up. And he then goes ahead and says, I'm a fighting champion. Whoever wants to face me at all out. I have an open contract, and he tosses it on the ring mat and walks out. Uh, someone from backstage comes out, gets the contract, and goes back backstage. Then we have... Uh, Jericho talking about his matchup with Danielson that he's going to be in for All Out uh, and Hager facing Danielson that for the night's meetup, which it was a decent match. I kind of liked it. I liked it a lot. It, it was a really good match. I, I found it enjoyable myself. So. Now, of course, after some pummeling back and forth, Danielson does win. Um... But anyway, after his win, he's attacked by Menard and Parker 2.0. And Jericho comes out to help them beat up on Danielson some more. <clears throat> Daniel Garcia, who had just, before the match, reaffirmed his uh, belief in the Jericho Appreciation Society, um, comes down the ring when Jericho is about to strike. <coughs> Danielson with a steel chair. Garcia takes the chair. And Danielson then deals a devastating blow to Jericho. So that's getting a little more interesting what's going to happen <coughs> with Garcia. And I think it's going to take place at All Out or the Dynamite after. <coughs> Goodness. But yeah. They have Ten of the Dark Order injured. And Evil Uno talks about how he's going to take Ten's place. And so it'll be him, Silver, and Reynolds in the trio's championship bout. Andrade, with his assistant, Jose, Comes in and just 
waylays on Evil Uno with one of Ten's crutches, while Jose keeps Ten at bay with a stun gun. This is to set up Hangman Page to become the partner of Silver and Reynolds in the trio matchup. We also have a four-person match. Well, it's a tag team match, four people. Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter versus Hikaru Shida and Tony Storm. Storm and Shida win with Shida doing the move to take down Baker and get the pin. How this match will go as a four-person match at All Out, I am uncertain. I can see it where any of the four win. I am serious about this. Tony Storm was partnered with Thunder Rosa, so obviously they were pushing that. Britt Baker, to recapture the title, would definitely be the hill position uh, that you can really take. Sheeta recapturing the title is definitely another one uh, because giving former champ champions the belt is always a possibility. And even Jamie Hayter has a chance of uh, capturing the belt if they want to make it where she captures the belt and Baker is like, good, uh, you will give me a title shot at some point. And Hater keeps putting it off, putting it off, until she is forced to turn on Britt Baker. Any one of these storylines, I could see. So, who wins that four-way match for the women's title? is interesting. They had a warm-up match um, for Wardlow FTR all together against three people. Uh, essentially, it was, you know, post the show, FTR and Wardlow were warming up for their match against uh, the Motor City Machine Guns and Lethal at All Out. Uh, let's see, what else? You had a four-person match. Um, with Willer Yuta, Rush, Ray Phoenix, and Dante Martin, which they're four of the people in this big ladder match where there's others included as well for a shot at the title. Um, and As a way to keep pushing Yuta, to keep trying to build him up, he won the match. More stuff that goes on that deals with the backstage talk. Punk comes out. You know, he questions himself. The guy who went in the ring, got the contract, comes out and he basically, he's like... You don't give up on yourself, blah, blah, blah. You know, he's, he's like, that's not what I want to see, da, da, da. He basically gives the contract to Punk, and he's like, 
You know, I, I, I'm not here to see you just quit and give up, and blah, blah, blah. Basically firing Punk up. Punk accepts the challenge. Well, even walking out into the crowd and speaking as he has the contract and signing it while he's in the crowd. So they're really pushing this Punk Moxley meetup for All Out. Of course, later after they've gone backstage, Moxley comes out. Again, he says, all right, punk, you want it this way? Fine, remember. It's your choice, but you better be prepared because I'm ready to knock your head off as soon as you get in the ring. And uh, finally, we have The Young Bucks and Kenny Omega versus Aussie Open and Will Ospreay in the Trios Tournament. It, it was fun seeing Kenny and Ospreay. They really pushed that angle, Kenny versus Ospreay. Um, I see more coming down the line between them because Kenny and the Young Bucks do win, but, um, after Dynamite goes off the air footage that I just watched, they show Osprey and Ozzy Open coming in and attacking Kenny and the Bucks and beat just, you know, taking their revenge. And Osprey grabs the mic and says, This is not over, Kenny. So they're kind of pushing that. And now, since Kenny and the Bucks are one half of the finals for the trio titles, the next final will take place on Rampage, Adam Page, um, Silver and Reynolds of the Dark Order. Versus Best Friends and Orange Cassidy. I see Paige, Silver, and Reynolds winning. Because to have Hangman Paige have to deal with both the Bucks and Kenny where the Bucks tried to recruit Hangman Page um, to be their trio's partner. And it would be the first confrontation between Page and Omega Since Paige won the world title off of Omega, this 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 will be interesting. There's a lot of storylines being set up with Kenny Omega, and a lot of potential storylines. So. I'm glad the working relationship with the New Japan is going so well. But yeah. That 
it, it was a pretty good show. Some of it was kind of slow at points. The storyline developing with Danielson Jericho and Daniel Garcia, definitely good. Um, yeah, definitely good. I like that they are keeping that working relationship with New Japan going, so we do see stars going back and forth. Oh yeah, Morrissey showed up. He beat up the wingmen, all four of them, in the ring. Stokely Hathaway then came, gave him his card, and he and Morrissey were going up the ramp to leave together. Tony Schiavone tried to stop Stokely Hathaway to ask him, all right, Stokely, what's with all these people you're getting? Stokely tried to tell him, it's none of your business. So no real answer. Yeah. Stokely Hathaway is building himself a stable of talent, it looks like. He's recruited... Morrissey, he's recruited uh, the Gun Club, and a few others. Of course, he is also representing uh, Jade Cargill, the current TBS champ, so... Yeah, uh, I think he's building himself a little power stable. Overall, I would give this Dynamite B+. Plus. Like I said, it was slow in some areas, but some of the other matches were really fun, really good. But I've went on long enough, taking your time. I'll see you on the next episode, as always. Until then. Later.